God presents, he still keeps presenting his, his expectation, his idea of what marriage and family is. And we're taking the time like I'm doing today just to kind of comb through some examples and some specific issues so that we can see this is what God had in mind. He knows that we are human beings. He knows that we miss one another. He knows that we don't know how to love and we don't know how to respect. But he calls upon us to show the same kind of mercy that he extended to us to extend it to one another. Marriage is a whole lot about mercy. Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot about mercy. Mercy to one another. Uh, extending mercy to one another. Um, so that even if it comes to the point what some of you have been through, what some of you have been through, some of you that are listening to me have been through, where it's reached all the way to the point of separation and divorce, if that person leaves, whether it's the husband or the wife, they will have to leave the same way a person would have to leave God to break their relationship with God, knowingly, consciously. The Bible speaks of that in Hebrews about the person that falls away or defects from the faith that they have to trample on the blood of Jesus and just, I, I want out of this. But it's not because God rejected them. It's not because God didn't give them another chance. It's not because God didn't extend mercy. And the same thing with us. It's gonna, they leaving because they have made up their mind, I do not want this covenant anymore. And that is painful. That is real. It's painful and it's real. And people do come to those kinds of decisions. Even when Peter was talking to wives in particular about how to deal with uh, uh, their husband who was not following Christ, who wasn't setting an example, uh, who wasn't doing right. He's told them to live in such a way that the man may be won by your lifestyle, uh, and by your, the gentleness of your spirit. He said, don't just let it merely be. He didn't say, you know, he said, don't let it merely be the outward adorning of yourself. So that he wasn't saying don't look good. He just said, don't let that be the emphasis or be the only way that you're trying to keep him because the physical is not going to be the way that you keep him. And if, here's the thing about it. I don't know if anybody's ever looked at this in scripture. Peter didn't say there's a guarantee this is going to work. He said that they may be won by your chaste conduct, which is your chaste living, meaning you keep yourself pure and clean and, and before the Lord and with a gentle and quiet spirit. But he made a special note, and the Lord's bringing me back to this again this week, a special note that he said to the woman. He said, be like the women in the past times who trusted God. People keep putting the emphasis on, you know, because he pointed out Sarah, how she even called Abraham Lord. She so respected her husband, she called him Lord. And so people have put the emphasis on that. You know, be like Sarah, respect the man, really acknowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, but to me, the emphasis in that scripture was Paul, was Peter telling the women, be like these women who trusted God. And at the end of that phrase, after he talked about Sarah is so respected her husband that she called him Lord. Then he said, and don't be afraid of any terror. Don't be afraid of the threats of fear.